namely Iran and Saudi Arabia. Through military, political, and economic influence, Turkey wants to become its own regional leader. But to understand why the country is doing this, we also have to look at its history. You see, Turkey has long been a global center of power. During the 15th and 16th century, the Turkish state was one of the most powerful in the world under the Ottoman Empire. Turkish tribes began to expand their territories in the 1300s and continued to do so for several hundreds of years. Because of incredible military strength, this expansion was one of the most successful in the entire history. At its peak, the Ottoman Empire controlled most of the Middle East, southeastern Europe, and North Africa. It reached all the way from modern Austria to Yemen and from Ukraine to Egypt. In total, it covered 19.9 million square kilometers. For comparison, that's about 3 million square kilometers bigger than modern-day Russia. With their vast territories, the Ottomans controlled some of the most lucrative trade routes in the world. Almost all of the trade between Asia and Europe flowed through their lands, giving the empire tremendous prosperity. This lasted all the way to the end of World War I, which isn't all that long ago, historically speaking. Near its final days, however, the Ottoman Empire suffered a slow and painful demise. Its leaders became corrupt, its economy declined, and its military began to lose wars against other great powers. After World War I, the once thriving empire was partitioned into the countries that we know of today, creating the modern-day Middle East. This marked the end of Turkey's regional ambitions, for a while at least. The leader of the newly found Republic of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, was focused on keeping the country internally stable. He wanted to be independent economically, politically, and militarily, and he opted for international isolation. But a few generations later, this policy was replaced by something completely new, Neo-Ottomanism. Just after the Cold War ended, the leaders in Turkey saw an opportunity to become a regional leader once again. The country had already abandoned its ideas of neutrality after it joined NATO in 1952, choosing sides in the US-Soviet Union rivalry. After the Soviet Union collapsed, Turkey's foreign policy began to be even more proactive. Under President Turgut Ozal, neo-Ottomanism became a central theme in Turkey's politics. Basically, the president wanted to make his country a regional leader once again. This followed the collapse of the Soviet Union, which opened up the playing field. He said that three important areas have opened in front of Turkey, the Balkans, the Caucasus, and the Middle East. Nowadays, these neo-Ottoman ideas have gotten even stronger, as the Balkans, the Caucasus, and the Middle East descended into warfare and chaos, the public wants a strong Turkish state. This led to the rise of the Nationalist Justice and Development Party, or AKP, with neo-Ottoman policies. The AKP wants a say in regional affairs, backed by a strong military. And although the party doesn't like the term neo-Ottoman, it's definitely a return to the past. The chances of another pandemic coming are low, but that doesn't mean that YouTube is not growing. In fact, YouTube just overtook Netflix in terms of how much time people spent on their TVs. And that's just television. Imagine how much time people are watching YouTube if you combine TV, phones, and computers. If you're waiting on a sign to start a channel, well, this may be the perfect one. And if you are looking to learn how people grow on YouTube in 2024, like this guy who got millions of views in just two months after starting, then I have the solution for you. We are opening up the waitlist for our first ever YouTube Basic Academy cohort. Here, we not only share the secrets we have learned about uploading for years on YouTube, we also share how we're able to start channels in completely different niches and scale them to millions of views in just a few months. We will also have live Q&As, a community where everyone can interact and learn from each other, and much more. If you want information on the cohort, then just click on the link in the description or scan the QR code that's on the screen right now. You can also sign up for the waitlist there.